Welcome to Next Talks and enormous pleasure to welcome Camila Hartwig, the Executive Vice President, Chief Commercial Officer at Teramex. Camila, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for inviting me today. Camila, as someone with 25 years of pharma experience, trusted board member with an impressive track record, could you please explain who is Camila as a modern pharma leader? Well, I've spent 25 years in the industry working in everything from generics to rare disease, from the superficial work in medical aesthetic to the truly invisible and taboo as mental health, from local, small country to truly big and global. And I think really what defines me is the focus on the journey, not the destination. It's the focus on the people, not the performance. And it's the focus on the purpose and actually not the product. And I think through all of this, we all, all elevate our game to be phenomenal performers that again and again deliver over expectation. And I think this is what represents me best as a modern pharma leader. Fantastic answer. Thanks a lot. Next question. Who do you, how do you train and maintain your innovative mindset? I think I do that by listening to everyone around me by always in, in installing the culture of speak up. And personally, I call that fish on the dish, which means say what you think, don't let it stink somewhere else. So when people know that it's appreciated to talk about the difficult stuff, then they also feel liberated to share the easy, fun stuff. And for me, in between those two polarities, I find that innovation thrives. And uh, I believe in accountability for your ideas and the freedom to try them. And I believe in sharing worst practice where true learning lie, not just best practice, that sometimes, at least in my view, in part could be luck and therefore sometimes dressed up as planned success in hindsight. Fantastic. Next question. Leading multicultural teams is certainly a big challenge. How is the importance of inclusion and diversity for you? Well, honestly, that's everything, right? You want everyone regardless of of uh, ethnicity, religion, uh, sexual orientation, et cetera, to feel that they belong. And the uh, cultures are, are different, but I don't think decent human behavior is that difference. That's why I always do my best to be an upstander, not a bystander, to show what in the moment is right or wrong. I don't always get it right myself. And sometimes I'm reflecting on this. And honestly, the ones I'm not always fair towards are people from my own Nordic culture which I find is actually pretty interesting, but it's something I'm working on. And uh, I think something that we all have to be aware of as leaders, where does our bias lies? Where don't they lie? And how do we continue to uh, evolve? Thank you. Next question. I know your empathy for patients and other stakeholders, and that plays certainly an important role in your leadership style. Is that the main driver for your pharma career or something else? Well, since I started my pharma career as a rep, I've learned quickly to think from the perspective of the patient, really. So to connect with their journey and the difficult emotions of uncertainty and despair, hope, and also relief, but literally everything that the patients feel. And I've always engaged more with the stories of people and patients rather, rather actually than the disease itself. And this is what gets me up in the morning, knowing that I can help in small ways to improve people's life, if not for the long-term always, but then the respite and the support in the, in the short term. And whether it's playing a part in saving a child's life in rare disease or giving women back the power to make individual choices for a life uninterrupted, both of these things are equally meaningful to me. It comes from focusing on the patient and focusing on the feelings and the emotions they have and people around them. Thank you. You describe yourself as international citizen with Danish roots. What does that mean for you? Well, I think um, 
that's probably around having lived in seven countries by now. Um, I've learned a lot from those cultures, which means that I'm both global, which also means that I don't fully connect with the Nordic or the Danish way of working anymore. Um, I'm proud that I've learned so much from the many cultures that, that I work within and work for. And I think that has taught me to be a situational leader, honestly. But uh, I must also admit that I will never lose the directness of the Danes or not believing in hierarchy and authority, which I think we're well known for in Denmark. And obviously the easiness and importance of always being able to, to have a laugh. So I think, as you say, it's a good mix of what I learned through my career, but then also never forgetting where I come from. So you take the best out of each culture, right? <laughs> I try. <laughs> Fantastic. Let's move forward to our most interesting part, the quick fire questions, which are always very personal. And the first question is a habit that makes you very unique. Well, um, maybe one of the habits is that I travel insanely much. Okay. And I'm probably one of the very few that actually loves it. And I was reflecting on, on my past week where I made it to Paris, Madrid, London and Copenhagen just within one week. Most would have hated it, but I felt super energetic from it. Um, I don't know if that's a positive unique, but it's definitely a unique. So back to normal for you, <laughs> with a lot of travel. <laughs> Fantastic. Interesting hobby which you have? Well, um, I wake up every morning to dive into the world of Kundalini Yoga. Mm -hmm. which is a very special place for organ, body, and mental strength. And it really centers me in ways that nothing else have done. Anything that I've tried has not been as good for me as this. So I would say that's really a really important hobby of mine. And I do it every single day. Thank you. That's on my bucket list, actually. Uh, I'm currently still at the mindfulness stage, so <laughs> every morning. <laughs> <laughs> but that's great. Thank you. Uh, define the meaning of family to you. The meaning of family, I would say um, it's where you are you. It's where you are seen. It's where you feel that you belong. And it's where you also get to see others for who they truly are. Yeah, I would say that to me, that's family. Thank you. Very nice. One word which describes you perfectly. <laughs> um, that's probably sassed. Okay. It's what I always in personality test scores absolute highest on. And I don't know if everyone knows what it means, but it means approaching life in general with excitement and energy and not approaching tasks or activities halfway or half-heartedly. So I'm always like 110% in. And people who are high in assess are excited to get up in the morning. We live life as an adventure. And it's... Um, it's a dynamic strength that is directly related to physical and psychological wellness. And funnily enough, it has the strongest ties to overall life satisfaction and a life of engagement. So when you know this about me, you are not surprised about any of the answers that I, that I gave uh, in the beginning of this short conversation. So yes, the answer is clearly sassed. Also when life is at its worst, which also happens in life. And the last question, favorite quote. My favorite quote. Honestly, I don't have a favorite quote. I think many situations are so different that it's just important to reflect on what is most important in the situations that, that you're in and then live through that. Thank you, Camila. It was a great honor and pleasure to have you at the next talks and uh, looking to our next engagement coming hopefully very soon. Hopefully very soon. Thank you so much, Daria. It was great speaking to you. Bye. See you soon. Bye.